Hey there, and welcome to 10TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud. We have Michael Behrens right here. Michael, kind of an active day yesterday with yeah. uh, a couple of thunderstorms and a little bit of whiplash. We haven't had thunder and lightning in so long. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since we've had it. We got more rain on the way now and another weather impact day in the forecast, too. Exactly. Today, we're looking at showers heading into the afternoon. Tomorrow, we have the wind. Let's start you off right now with a look at the rain that will be on the way as we head into this afternoon. We have a five-hour window from, for you between 3 p.m. and 8 o'clock at night, so about a five-hour window. Small hail and or grapple, which that's basically a partially melted snowflake like we'll talk about coming up here in a moment. So have that rain gear with you as we head into tonight. Now, as we walk you through the hourly forecast, again, starting you off at two o'clock this afternoon, not a whole lot going on out there, but we'll stop right here at about four o'clock. And I do wanna point something out to you here. You'll notice that we are gonna be tracking some of these uh, yellow spots on the map. If we do see any hail or gravel, that would be where it occurs around four o'clock and five o'clock. Through the dinner time, rush hour commute home, still tracking a few showers out there. Eventually, as we get towards seven, eight, nine o'clock, eventually we kick the system out of here. And then we got some dry air kind of entraining into that system heading into tonight. There's a small chance that you could get a rumble of thunder or a flash of lightning heading into this evening. These would be non-severe, so we're not talking damaging winds or definitely no tornadoes, but maybe a flash or two or lightning as we head into tonight. But I did mention that possibility that we could see a little bit of grapple. And essentially what that is, is that you have a snowflake. Most precipitation starts off as snow. What happens though, is that that snowflake will move through an area of what we called super cooled water. What is that? Essentially rain droplets that are below freezing. So it's technically still liquid, but you're under 32 degrees. Eventually what happens is that as you go through that layer of super cooled water, you end up getting this ball that ends up forming here. And as you have a very high rate of velocity, a very high speed, eventually what ends up happening is that you start getting what we call rhyming, which is essentially you get these uh, water droplets that kind of freeze onto that ball and stick. And so you get this like crunchy sleet like pellet that makes it down to the ground. So long story short, as we head through today, we're going to be looking at that. I do want to point out, unlike hail, they are soft and harmless, whereas hail can actually cause damage, right? So we're not looking at that today. Additional rainfall a few one hundredths of an inch. You can see right now the models are trying to pick out some areas that if you get under a heavier cell, you could be looking at maybe two or three tenths of an inch. But generally speaking, I think everybody stays under a quarter of an inch. Temperatures out there today, I think we make it to 52 here in MacArthur, 52 in Jackson, a bit cooler as we head off to the west as we're looking at temperatures mostly in the 40s. But here you go, 10 weather impact tomorrow evening. Why? Strong wind. Okay, we're giving you an eight hour window from 12 p.m. to eight o'clock at night for strong winds in excess of 40 miles per hour. So be careful if you do have to travel out there tomorrow. Now, take a look at this right here. All right, so as we go through tomorrow morning, you wake up, the wind is already a bit breezy, but it's not too bad. It gets cranking though by about three o'clock. Okay, and I want to point something else out. I-71, you head north and west of I-71. Those will be the troubled spots where we're talking winds up and over 40 miles per hour. It will still be blustery down to our southeast, just not as bad as what we're looking at north and west. And as we head past sunset, eventually the winds will die off and eventually improve. All right, so through today, we're looking at winds maybe up around 20 miles per hour. Dying off as we head through tonight. Tomorrow, though, again, those strong winds 25 to 40 miles per hour. So be prepared for that. As we head into the metro area, this is specifically for the inside I-270 loop. We're looking at winds around 40 miles per hour as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening. As we get a look right now at the seven day forecast, again, heading into tomorrow, we have that 10 weather impact alert day. Heading into Saturday, if you are a Blue Jackets fan, we're gonna be looking at temperatures a little bit chilly here for that puck drop here at 6 p.m., dropping off to 29 degrees as we head towards the later half of the game. Sunshine is back for Sunday and Monday. Both Sunday and Monday look absolutely terrific. 
And then as we head into next week, we actually warm up a bit 55 to 60 between Tuesday and Wednesday. And the pattern, of course, becomes a lot more active heading into next week as well. Yeah, so we're going that roller coaster still up and down. Not much real winter weather in there, but a lot of warm weather in the days ahead. In March 1st, Saturday, it's coming in like a lamb. We're not really looking at any more cold spells anytime soon. If anything, yeah. we're going to be thawing that ice and seeing a lot of melting. Yeah, absolutely. And as you were mentioned, Dylan, we're going to see that melting coming our way, but it is causing more issues around the region today. In fact, there is a warning right now in northeast Ohio. Firefighters are on alert for ice jams along the Chagrin River. In the past 24 hours, community members in that area say they started hearing loud noises that sounded like an earthquake. The fire chief there says that that's the sound of ice breaking and a sign that there could soon be flooding. We got big chunks of ice, very big chunks of ice that are breaking away. There's more vegetation, more of the, uh, the river bank that's being eroded. So this is a concern for us. City officials have not asked anyone to evacuate, but they are advising anyone who lives there to be prepared just in case. I do want to take a quick moment to show you exactly what an ice jam is. What we're looking at here would be a frozen river. And once we get into these warmer days, that starts to, of course, melt that ice on the river. It breaks apart because this process doesn't typically happen evenly. Those chunks of ice push downstream and then they can get wedged up at a choke point, bend in the river or other obstruction. And this is what we call the ice jam. Behind that, this essentially acts as a frozen dam. The water starts to pile up and pile up and it can cause flooding behind the point of the ice jam. And the other concern is downstream. Once the ice jam breaks, you may get some flooding downstream from these jams once well, things start to get back to normal. So definitely problematic this time of the year. I was not expecting that graphic. That was so cool. <laughs> the little, and, and I'm a visual guy too. So yeah. if you can always show me exactly how it forms, I love that. Yeah, and you know, this goes along kind of with the story we were talking about yesterday too on the, on the Impact Show. Ice this time of year, just a, a dangerous affair. Oh, for sure. Especially in the north where they get extreme cold, like negative 20 and a lot of snow. And then you get rain, so you have yeah. warmer temperatures, rain, and then on top of that you have snow melt. Everything kind of culminates on top of one another. Absolutely, so definitely stay away from that ice. And new information today on how federal job cuts could impact the environment. The cuts from the Trump administration have extended to the U.S. Forest Service, which has seen about a 10 percent job cut as part of the White House's plan to shrink the federal government. The Trump administration has also cut a thousand jobs in the National Park Service, including employees who were newly hired. The National Park Service says in 2023, 325 million people visited those national parks. And continuing with our environment news, Ohio continues to be one of the hardest hit states by the bird flu. And today we're learning new reports about dead geese in Chillicothe. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources says it recently collected three dead geese from uh, Yachtingi Park. Test results for one goose is presumed positive. A goose in Mercer County also recently tested positive as ODNR waits to learn more about those results. And new data from the Department of Agriculture shows Ohio leads the nation in cases for bird flu, but that number has been falling. Last week, more than 9 million birds were affected. This week, that number just over 8.5. That still accounts for about 28% of all the egg-laying hens here in Ohio. We're told 46 commercial flocks and two backyard flocks are currently affected. And also today... We're getting a better look at how the USDA plans to battle the virus and lower egg prices. The USDA unveiled a billion dollar plan which calls for enhancing biosecurity measures to keep the virus off farms, cutting back on regulations for egg producers in an effort to make it easier for families to raise backyard chickens and temporarily importing more eggs. The U.S. Secretary of Agriculture says she hopes shoppers will start to see some relief by the summer. We are seeing probably even a little bit more um, increase up until Easter, which is actually normal because so many eggs are used around Easter. We also have only been in 30 days. I've been in 13 days. Um, we are going, it's going to take a little while to, to get through, I think, the next month or two, but hopefully by summer. 
And while you wait for prices to drop, there are some cheaper egg alternatives. When baking, you can substitute a banana or a quarter cup of yogurt for one egg. You can also try tofu instead of scrambling eggs. Plus, data shows a pound of ground beef pork chops and chicken breast are each a better deal than a dozen eggs. And some positive bird news. If you're a bird watcher, listen up. The state of Ohio needs your help. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources is asking you to report a bald eagle nest from now through March 16th. You can report any new nests and those green dots, well, they'll be where the nests have already been spotted. Back in the 1970s, bald eagle's population was down to only a few nests. Now there are more than 900, including a high concentration in Ottawa County near Toledo because of wetland habitats by the water. And we have that link. If you want to look at those reports on our website, just head to 10tv.com slash featured links and happy bird watching. And finally today, well, it's not a bird, but it's a plane. All right. I had to make that joke. It's a terrible joke. <laughs> An aviation pioneer is gearing up for a flight nonstop around the world in a hydrogen-powered plane. The mission's all about clean energy, as CBS's Tina Krause reports. Bertrand Picard is no stranger to the skies. This aircraft hangar in France is his workshop, where he's looking to revolutionize the flight industry with this hydrogen-powered plane. And the goal is to fly nine days around the world, nonstop, and produce zero emissions. In a world dominated by planes that run on fossil fuels, the Swiss climate activist is promoting a cleaner flight path. We take green hydrogen, that means hydrogen that is produced through renewable electricity, liquefy this hydrogen and put it into huge fuel tanks. Those tanks power Climate Impulse, a two-seater plane with the wingspan of an Airbus 320, designed to fly for nine days straight. This isn't Picard's first foray into the future of flight. Back in 2015, his Solar Impulse aircraft that runs on sunlight made history by flying around the world. But it wasn't practical for commercial aviation. Picard says his hydrogen plane is and flies at altitudes that can harness energy from turbulence in the atmosphere. And I believe that the airlines are also in the future going to use the same type of energy from the atmosphere in order to save fuel and to be more efficient. A test flight is set for next year to see if the technology can help clear the runway for cleaner, greener travel. Tina Krause, CBS News, London. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10TV. An eruption at the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii picked back up on Wednesday, with lava fountains reaching as high as 600 feet according to the USGS. Intermittent volcanic activity began first in December of last year. The lava flows have been confined to the volcano summit, avoiding populated areas on the state's largest island, about 200 miles southeast of Honolulu. The USGS reported the latest lava eruption paused after about 12 hours on Wednesday. Ooh. That is a huge They've had a lot of eruptions of there. Yeah. I mean, that's just been ongoing now for about three months with this particular eruption. And I mean, so long as it stays where it's at. Yep, that's all that matters. It's pretty to look at, but right. you don't want that spilling out of the caldera. Jeez. Yeah, no. And finally, when a Shanghai-based designer posted a vacation photo on Valentine's Day and captioned it, Puppy Mountain became a sensation in China, created a tourist destination. He noticed this while going on a hike near his hometown of Yichang in central China's uh, Hubei province in late January. When reviewing the photos, he saw something he hadn't noticed before, a mountain that looked like a dog's head resting on the ground next to the Yangtze River. Its snout perched on the water's edge. You can see it from an observation deck. The Yangtze is the longest river in China, third longest in the world. It flows through many mountainous areas. Do you see the puppy, Dylan? Can yes. you spot it? Yes, I can do. you make it out? <laughs> that is also one of the most polluted rivers in the world, if, if my uh, knowledge stands correct. Yeah, that part's not any good, but the puppy. The puppy part is I like the puppy great. part. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Any more? Nope. That's all we got for today. All right. Well, that does it for us here on 10TV Plus. Be sure to tune in. Chief Meteorologist Jerry Marth will have your forecast tonight at 6 o'clock.